Hey, how's it going? Just get your reminder to click the like button and subscribe here to the channel so you don't miss any videos and stay well inside our entire universe of Dragon Ball. Without further ado, let's get started. Korn continues his search for his divine energy within himself. The further into the forest it became even darker and darker. Many questions insisted on hammering her head, and among these two questions stood out in his mind. Will I be able to acquire my energy of destruction? Will I be a good Hakaishin? And in among the top four? With every step that Korn took, he was determined not to listen to his negative thoughts and continued to search for his divine energy. After a few more minutes, Korn finally arrives at the central place of the forest where a purple energy ball stood out. Very similar to the one he was hit by Beerus in the other dimension world which caused him indescribable pain. I finally found it! Now I just have to pick it up and that way I will master my energy! Korn says with an air of satisfaction. The closer he got to the energy, Korn felt the tense atmosphere and in an air of suffocating fear. Even so, he does not give up on his goal and tries to reach his energy of destruction. But in his first attempt to catch it, the energy ball escaped moving in an incredible speed, forcing him to chase it. But it was being impossible for him to reach. What? How? How is it so fast? I have to think of it. Of something fast. Says Korn not giving up and continued chasing the energy ball and increasingly dodged his attempts of reaching it. At one point, Korn thought a little about a solution until he increased his key giving him the ability to move at great speed. Then he managed to capture the ball of energy in his arm. That's when he wondered if he'd done the right thing by picking it up like this. Because the moment he grabs the ball, the energy envelops his entire body causing him a lot of pain, both physical and emotional. Suddenly, a strong anguish takes over his entire intimate, and a terrifying fear makes his bones tremble. Distorted visions of anguished screams of children and women are heard in his head. It was a horrible feeling that his heart goes into despair. His vision is gradually opened and soon he realizes he's flying over a completely destroyed city and several bodies scattered everywhere. Come on, Saiyan warriors all together! We won't give ourselves up so easily to this damn freezer! Shouts a Saiyan with a big scar on his right side of his face, next to Korn, flying towards the ship. The Hakaishin wasn't quite understanding the situation he was in, and who Frieza was that the Saiyan was just mentioning. But for the details he was facing seemed to be in the middle of a war. Suddenly, another group of warriors formed in front of them, organizing themselves to counterattack. Hey Yamushi, let's go until the end! Let us be Saiyans until the end! Says the Saiyan with a positive sign with his hand, forcing Korn to do the same and ask himself, Why did he call him Yamushi? And how does he know you? We are ready, Commander Bardock, and waiting for your orders, General Yamushi! Says one of the Saiyans next to him right away. Let's do as we planned. Let's attack and finish Frieza once and for all! Confirms Bardock before the excitement of the other Saiyans. Attention, man! Attack! Says one of the men from the rival army, attacking the Saiyans. And a great battle begins, forcing Korn to fight intensely against countless enemies. Freeza! Get off your ship, you coward! I will never forgive you! Shouted Bardock while fighting fiercely against countless opponents. The ship's hatch is opened, and a being appears, being driven by a kind of cocoon. Korn tries to approach but the many enemies were attacking him simultaneously and he soon notices that his strength of a god of destruction at that moment was reduced and he fought equally with the enemies. What is happening? Why am I living like this? I can't understand anything! <laughs> but I feel like I've already witnessed this moment once. Why is this so familiar? Asks Korn trying to simulate everything he was witnessing. He notices the Saiyan quickly approaching the being who has just left his ship, and crying out with a loud voice, Frieza stretched out one of his fingers and formed a small ball of red energy. <sighs> this will be an opportunity to change the fate of planet Vegeta, and also change our destiny! The fate of the Saiyans and obviously your fate is cursed! Bardock screams, forming a big ball of energy in his hand, while Frieza remains motionless with just a small energy on his finger. It's the end for you! Die, Frieza! Bardock launches his energy against Frieza, who showed no interest in defending himself, just burst out laughing. His little ball of energy grows rapidly, and like a sponge, absorbs Bardock's power. 
who in disbelief looks at Korn with a look of astonishment. What? What was that? Asks Bardock, frustrated that his strongest power has failed. The energy ball grew considerably, and with just a wave of his hand, Frieza launches a counter blow towards Bardock and everyone who was beside him, whether allies or enemies. The energy ball hits Bardock full, consuming him considerably, causing him an indescribable pain. And so it also came up to Korn, who tried to hold his butt without success, and his body was massacred, as if he was receiving thousands of simultaneously blows. Ya ya mushy! Please! No! Bardock screams in pain in his last effort to approach Korn. My friend, we'll see you in the other side. Thank you for helping me with little Kakarot. Thank you. <laughs> the pain in Korn's body intensified now the intense light of the red ball leading his weakened body towards the planet. Now it was a purple like his energy. He soon realized that he was fighting his energy of destruction. He was fighting against his own limit. In a very distant place in Universe 7, there appears to be a single lifeless planet. This planet didn't have a single star near it, and because it didn't receive any kind of heat from any star, the planet was simply extremely cold and freezing. There was no vegetation or any kind of animal life on this planet. Everything in that place was cold and ice. In the center of this planet, there was a huge glacier comparing to a big mountain. And suddenly a ship enters the orbit of that planet and lands on top of that glacier. After landing, the ship's door opens and a silhouette of a being appears in the middle of the strong frost. It was Frieza, accompanied by his two lackeys, Barry Blue and General Kikono, who wore special suits to withstand the intense cold of the planet. But Frieza apparently felt nothing of the cold on that freezing planet. Oh my! I had forgotten! Already forgotten how cold this place was! Says Barry Blue, hugging himself, trying to warm up. You're right! Agrees Kikono. We are with these advanced special clothes, even so we can feel the terrible cold! <sighs> if it weren't for them, we would definitely die right away! Meanwhile, Frieza walked in front and was not at all bothered by the cold on that planet. But it seemed that he was bothered by something else. All he had at the moment was a memory in his mind, and that memory was making him shake, but with anger and with shame. He did not accept at all the humiliation he had suffered on his last visit to planet Earth, where he found a same minion named Broly, and this minion out of control attacked him without giving him the time to react. After that, his hatred for Saiyans increased even more. Soon, his will to finish and exterminate all Saiyans that he started 49 years ago back on planet Vegeta was stronger than ever. After a few moments, a few minutes of walking along the glacier, they arrived at a place where a button was well hidden. Kikono presses that button and immediately opens a hole on the floor, and a kind of elevator appears where the three enter and Kikono activates the other buttons where the elevator descends at high speed to the underground of that planet. It's been a long time since I've been in this place, Frieza says in a serious tone. Lord Frieza is right. Last time we were here, we came without you, confirms Kikono reverently. Yes, King Cold was also with us. We came here to arrest that person, comments Barry Blue. This arrest was made by my father, especially to arrest that person. After that, there was no need for us to be here anymore. Suddenly, the elevator stops, facing a corridor with hundreds of soldiers in readiness. It was nearly a thousand soldiers to guard a single prisoner. Frieza started walking down the hall and immediately all the soldiers knelt down and bowed, showing respect to the Emperor of the Universe. Hmm, so many soldiers. But in the end, all useless. <laughs> Frieza speaks with a sarcastic smile on his face and follows the long corridor of that person based towards the cell of a dangerous being imprisoned by his father Code. Korn was fighting with all his might to resist the incredible power of the destruction energy. His body and mind were getting heavier and heavier. All the anger that was dormant in his body begins to be released. As he struggled to control it, the energy was ending and warning and that gave him even more motivation to keep trying. Until in the last act, Korn manages to reach his limit of key and finally the energy of destruction was dominated. There! 
<laughs> From now on, you will accompany me and help me. Korn says, satisfied with being able to dominate his divine energy. Korn didn't realize it, but he had just returned to his reality. Vados was beside him, euphoric and happy that he managed to release his Akai energy. He looked at his right hand and a small ball of purple the size of a baseball was seen for a few seconds until it dissipated. <sighs> I got it, Vados. I finally accessed my divine <clears throat> energy. <coughs> Korn speaks with an air of tired and exhausted. Well done, Mr. Korn. I knew you would make it. Speaks Vados, very happy for the progress of her student. This will help us to evolve even more in your training tomorrow. Tomorrow? I already managed to activate my energy now and we just continue our training. Today won't be possible, Mr. Korn. Speaks Vados, noticing Korn's difficulty in standing up. You used a lot of your key trying to dominate your energy of destruction. I know that your power is unlimited and that you are still prepared for one more training sequence, but you still haven't trained enough resistance of your body that is slowly getting used to the amount of power you have. So let's go in stages in your training, so that the two evolve together their power and their body. <sighs> what the heck, Vados? I am fine! Let let's do this! <clears throat> are you sure? <clears throat> yeah! Let's do it! Vados quickly approaches Korn and touches him with just a little finger. It was enough for him to feel that all the bones of his body were breaking. Korn instantly falls to the ground, unconscious. <laughs> I told you! Now I'm going to take you to your room. You'll surely sleep until tomorrow. Says Vados laughing but satisfied for her new student. Unlike Champa, she sees something very promising in this new Hakaishin and is sure he will reach heights never seen before in Universe 6. After teleporting Korn's body to his bed, Vados receives an unexpected visitor. Hi Vados, I'm back! Oracle Fish, where were you? Says Vados in a disapproving tone for the absence of the Oracle Fish at Korn's reception. All good, I know I'm dab to the new Hakaishin, but I've been surveying our entire universe for how sloppy Champa has been, so we need to talk about starting Korn on his first task right away. <sighs> Although he has an impressive power which I have never seen, I think we need a little more time to start his work. We complete some special training and then I'll start guiding him through his tasks as a Hakaishin. Of course, Vados, you're his master. You know the right moment and the right time for him to be prepared. And I know he will be great. An excellent Hakaishin among the 12. Is this another one of your premonitory visions? Mm, no, I still haven't had any premonitions about our Hakaishin. I say that because I feel a different climate on this planet. It's, and it's been a while since I've seen you that excited like this, Vados. <laughs> Vados also realized that the environment has changed since Korn's arrival. Indeed, a lot can still happen in Universe 6. Upon reaching the end of the corridor, Frieza and his lips come face to face with a gigantic door, reinforced with a super resistant metal. At this moment, Barry Blue was terrified because he knew very well what was going on in the other side. A dark past that he tried to hide for many, many years. But the inevitable was happening. Again, he was there about to wake up one of the most powerful beings he had ever known. A few years ago, one of the great generals of King Cold's army was the great Cooler, the eldest son of the king and the older brother of Lord Frieza. Cooler was extremely powerful and had great achievements for his father's kingdom, but Cooler's power grew so much over the years that King Cold felt threatened and worried about it, for his powers had easily surpassed his and Frieza's. Fearing that one day Cooler would usurp his throne, King Code devised a plan together with Frieza to capture Cooler and his trusted men. The plan really worked and Cooler and his men were imprisoned on this planet. King Code built this place specifically for this purpose, to arrest his eldest son. Barry Blue thought to himself while Frieza unlocked the door. Frieza places his hand on the digital reader and after confirming his identification, the large door opens onto a very large room, and in its center was a tube with plenty of liquid and several technological items around it. Inside this tube was Cooler, in a deep sleep with his hands and feet chained by large metal plates. This is my big brother. Congratulations, Kikono! It seems that your prison capsule works perfectly despite having the past of years. But explain to me what this liquid really is. Frieza says, touching the glass of the capsule. Uh, thank you, Lord Frieza. 
says Kikono with a shy and nervous smile. Well, the liquid inside the capsule is a powerful sedative. It is it that makes Lord Kula paralyzed and sleepy. And it still has the functionality to neutralize his key. At the moment, I worked for months on this capsule and spent a lot of resources to build it. Everything was specially made for Lord Kula. Hmm. Huh. You did a great job with this prison. But now I want you to empty the capsule of this sedative liquid. Uh, Lord Frieza, with all due respect, are you, are you really sure about that? I don't know if only the metallic plates will be able to hold the Lord Cooler. If he's not under the effect of the sedative. Do not be silly. Cooler was actually supposed to be more powerful than me and my dad in the past. But his powers haven't grown since he was imprisoned. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll do as you ask. Right now, of course. Kikono goes to the nearest computer, and after pressing some buttons, he opens a hole in the capsule and releases all the liquid that was inside. After a few seconds, Kula's body starts to react. Soon, he will wake up from his long sleep. Impressive. In a few minutes without a sedative, his body is already reacting. You really expect less than that from the almighty Lord Kula, comments Barry Blue with an air of nervousness. Waiting for Kula to wake up definitely. <sighs> Hello, brother. How long has it been? You bastard! How dare you stand before me? Where is our father? I don't deserve King Ko's illustrious presence. Our father died a long time ago. Frieza speaks without highlighting any feelings. Curses! Who dare kill him before me? I was the one who should have killed him! Incredibly, our father was killed by a mere Saiyan. Frieza says with a big hatred in his eyes. What? Impossible! That is impossible! A monkey like that would never kill our father. And if I remember correctly, it was you who destroyed each one of them and their pathetic planet. Oh, Cooler, so much has changed while you've been stuck here. As shocking as this may sound, the Saiyans are no longer the weaklings we used to subdue. That is blasphemy. How could you let that happen, you idiot? Suddenly, the plates that held Cooler started to vibrate with the increase of his key. That is why I'm here, brother. As much as I hate to admit our army that once ruled everything we wanted, is no longer sovereign in this universe. Frieza speaks slowly. It is necessary that you join me so that we form a true elite of powerful warriors to defeat the Saiyans that live on planet Earth. Join you? I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill all your minions! And then I'm going to find this planet Earth and eliminate those insolent Saiyans like you should have! Kula breaks free in his handcuffs and blows up the capsule he was trapped in using his key. The force of the impact was so great that it throws Barry Blue and Kikono out of the room. Then Kula goes full speed ahead of Frieza in order to hit him with a punch. But Frieza easily catches his punch with just one hand. Kula didn't understand why his attack failed and how Frieza managed to defend. <clears throat> what? I'm glad to know that all this time trapped. Your power level has not decreased even 1%, Frieza says with a smile on his face. Now, let me tell you what I'm really capable of. Suddenly, Frieza starts to concentrate his energy until he manages to release his golden form, making Kula fall to the ground with the impact of his key. Kula is startled, and at the same time impressed by what he's seeing. It cannot be! When did you get such power? This is much more powerful than my transformations! That's right, brother. But look, do not need to be sad. If you join me, I will teach you how to reach this form. And together, we will reunite the elite force capable of facing the Saiyans of Earth. And after that, the whole universe will bow to Frieza, the evil emperor and his army commanded by you! Kula. <sighs> well then, I will join you temporarily until I manage to kill the Saiyans that live on planet Earth. But on one condition. Release my special forces who are also trapped in these barracks formed by cold. 
Our father. Yes, for our army, the better. Frieza speaks, returning to his normal form, extends his hand to his brother, Cooler. Are we all right? Yes. Accepts Cooler, shaking his brother's hand, sealing the agreement between them. Great now. Then we will release your man and return to the ship. Minutes later, Frieza returns to his ship with his older brother Cooler at his side, accompanied by his lackeys and his brother's trusted men. Three main ones of Cooler's armor squadron is Arsalza, the pretty boy, captain of the squad, Dor, a large green fighter, and Nis, a tall amphibian-like soldier. When Cooler enters the ship and notices all the advanced technology, he soon realizes that he really will be wasting a lot of time being trapped on this planet. You did a great job in the ship, Frieza. There are things that I haven't particularly achieved. These novelties are innovations of our scientists. And General Kikono and Barry Blue. They do a great job. Can I have a look on the entire ship? Of course, brother. I'll keep you company proposed Frieza. They survey the entire ship, and Cooler can't disguise how impressed he is. In each room and corridor, they were revered by their soldiers until Cooler comes across a different crew member. Who is this guy? That is Soba, a guy from the planet Yardrat. Is he part of your team? He looks physically fragile to me. What is he really doing here? He's not a soldier, if that's your question, but I guarantee for you that he has very useful skills for our army in manipulating space and time. <sighs> Whatever. But anyway, what are we going to do now? <laughs> Follow me. Frieza takes Cooler to the command room and accesses a computer and presses a button where a huge screen appears with several images with all the data and information of several warriors with great power throughout the universe. We will go after the next warriors who will join the elite of our army. And after that, we will dominate the planet Earth. And then, we will continue dominating the entire universe. Announces Frieza, happy because soon his revenge against Goku and the other Saiyans will come true. The three-dimensional crack. Six months before, Daishikan shared the message of the unexpected meeting with the Xeno Lords to the Eleven Universes and his last visit with the Universe 6 to meet Champa and Vados who received the High Priest with joy and surprise. Good morning, Mr. Daishikan! What a surprise to welcome you here in our universe! Says Champa, not hiding his surprise to see the powerful priest in front of him. Good morning, Mr. Champa. I bring you a message from Lord Zeno himself in exactly six hours. You must be present for a very important meeting with them in his palace, announces Daishikan to Champa. But meanwhile, by telepathy, the great high priest communicates with Vados without the perception of Hakaishin of Universe 6. Listen to me, Vados. Soon you will be the master and helper of a stronger being that ever existed among the Hakaishins. He was created from the essence of the Xeno Lords themselves, and that resulted in a very powerful being. I am at your command, Mr. Daishikan, my father. It will be an honor for me to fulfill this great task. But a doubt intrigues me, sir. How will this be possible? I am still Champa's helper. Champa will be replaced by him soon. But I want you to keep this secret until the right moment. But this Hakaishin, as I said, is very powerful, and he will command both Universe 6 and Universe 7. Huh? And who is this being so powerful, O oh Great Priest? His name is Korn. He is the ancient essence of a saint who lived a long time ago on planet Vegeta. Pay close attention. He will want to know his oranges, and he certainly will. But first, he must manage to improve his current form as Hakaishin and then one day reveal his past. But why didn't Mr. Zeno create a being from scratch? I mean, someone who doesn't have two natures. Yeah, this should have happened. If they didn't suggest creating a Saiyan that was equal in power and strength to their friend Goku. So when his energy was elaborated to create the new Hakaishin, we had to use a Saiyan soul as if 
he was pure and fit for this process. And we found with the help of Kamisama one that was capable with our objective and we found Yamoshi, a former general who operated in the forces of both King Vegeta II and III. So, what should I do if he asks his origins? I'm not supposed to tell about his past, but is that just what it takes? Answer only what is convenient, as his origins is in Universe 7, and he's a Saiyan of Instinct Planet Vegeta that was destroyed by Emperor Frieza. And another piece of advice I must give you, actually, guidance. When visiting your first planet, take Korn to the planet of the Turfos in Universe 7. He has strong roots with these people. In fact, they still exist only because of the benevolence of their former nature as Yamoshi. And to advance how he is connected to his people. Yamoshi has a granddaughter who became the queen of the Tsufuros. Meaning she's a half Saiyan. But what is the point of taking him to that place? Simple. I want to see how he will behave in front of them. He will be like the Hakaishin Korn or like the Saiyan Yamoshi. Then take him to meet the Saiyans of Sadala from Universe 6 and complete our research. Yes, Mr. Daishikan. I will do all your bidding. Yamoshi. I must remember this name if I ever need to know about this new Hakaishin second nature. What? To be continued. So hey, my partner, what do you believe in and what do you imagine about all of this? Regardless of what it is, it is more than important that you arrive exposing it in your comments so that we can enter into that crazy debate. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe here to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.